2013 Boston Marathon bombings, but we saw, we saw um, repeats of this same rumor. And that was that the, the, the event hadn't happened the way that you, that the mainstream uh, narrative says it happened. And, it, and in fact, uh, it, it, it was, it's been blamed on somebody else, um, but it was perpetrated by um, usually some government or powerful force. Uh, and so this is an example tweet from the Boston Marathon bombings. Um, it smells, it, uh, this one came out within like a couple hours of the, the marathon bombings. Uh, someone tweets this and then many tweets afterwards kind of echo this. Uh, the Boston bombing smells like a CIA, CIA black ops false flag operation um, again. And then don't be fooled by the mainstream media lies. Uh, and I didn't notice that last line um, during our first time studying this, but things like that uh, became more relevant and interesting to me over the last few years. Um, so we kept seeing this, this same kind of rumor happen um, after every man-made crisis event that we studied, and we studied several of them. Um, and then we began to see how it was connected back to earlier um, theories about 9-11 or the Sandy Hook shootings. And, and again, these are claims that the events didn't happen um, in the way that you think. So one of the claims is that um, it was actually, it was perpetrated, but perpetrated by someone else and then blamed on the, the, common, uh, the commonly held uh, suspects. Um, and another one is that the event didn't happen at all, but it was staged by crisis actors in order to, to um, forward some sort of political ag agenda. And, and so uh, after seeing these, these things, things happen, um, in the year 2016, we started to look at some structural analysis of some of these things, and we started un understanding some interesting patterns, or, or not quite understanding, but seeing some interesting patterns in who was talking about this, which websites were talking about that, and how they overlapped with um, political things that were happening in 2016. And at the end of 2016, I decided to do a, a research study specifically looking at um, alternative narratives that were present during um, conversations on Twitter about shooting events in 2016. And I'm going to talk a, a little bit about what I did. So I collected Twitter um, horribly uh, as a crisis researcher. Um, we had a collection going that was there to cover shoot shootings that were happening in the moment. So we collected on shooting related uh, search terms for nine months in 2016 using the Twitter streaming API. Um, that initial set had 58 million tweets. Um, but then using our contextual understanding of what uh, these alternative narratives were, we took some terms that we knew were commonly held of alternative narratives and we cut the set um, by those, those search terms uh, down to about 100,000 tweets. Um, and then to give you just uh, kind of an example of, of one of those, so during 2016, about a, a year ago now, the uh, horrific Orlando nightclub shootings happened, um, and there were uh, rumors that that was a false flag or a hoax event. Um, and, and there were many tweets about that, including this one, um, which kind of positions this as uh, something that the M FBI was in on this somehow. There were multiple suspects, and they're, they're hiding it, um, and this person was actually working on behalf of the FBI. Um, there, here's another tweet. Uh, this one actually connects the, the Orlando hoax to other <laughs> hoaxes, and you can see it's just like Sandy Hook, just like the Boston Marathon bombings, and in this case, um, somewhat paradoxically, considering they were ref referencing the Boston Marathon bombings, they talk about how these are being used for a, a gun takeaway agenda. This is one of the political theories that they have, is that people are propagating these, or people are perpetrating these, these um, shooting events. Uh, the government is doing it in order to take away gun rights. Um, and then here's another tweet that, uh, from an, a suspended account, but I'm, I'm putting it up there because I, I think in this case it's important to um, under, uh, understand what's going on. I don't usually use tweets from a suspended accounts, but it says, um, Orlando shooting was a hoax, just like Sandy Hook, Boston bombing, and San Bernardino. Keep believing the Rothschild Zionist news companies. So this kind of echoes uh, the uh, talk that Mark Ackerman gave yesterday and talked about some of these same themes. Um, but you can see this connection to A, an attack on the news companies, um, B, uh, anti-Semitic themes that are within these, these alternative narratives, and um, C, the, the mention of Rothschild, which, is, uh, with, which along with George Soros, or one of the two boogeymen, um, that, that many of these themes call into play when they start to, to make these claims that, that powerful people are pulling the strings of world events. Um, and so um, with, with this content and this understanding that these things were happening, again, I, said, I started to notice that these things were intersecting with other political themes. And so what I did was I tried to use this conversation that was happening on Twitter around alternative narratives as a window into the alternative media 
ecosystem that is talking about those things. And so what I did was I created a domain network graph where I took all the, t the tweets that had URLs and if, um, and I took every user who sent more than one tweet with, with a URL and when the same user sent different tweets with different URLs, I connected those tweets in a graph. So in this case, the same user uh, sent one tweet um, pointing to yournewswire.com and another tweet, oh, that's terrible. Um, sorry, that little E was not supposed to be there. And another tweet um, looking, uh, pointing to activistpost.com uh, and then those domains became connected um, in my graph. And so what I did was I created this sort of graph based on user behavior of the kinds of domains that were cited um, related to alternative news, or related to alternative, excuse me, uh, alternative narratives, um, which is a subsection of the alternative news uh, universe. And these are colored in a specific way. I'll talk a little bit about um, in a second. Uh, and then what I did is I, I horribly, and I don't recommend this, but for three weeks of my life, I did a massive content analysis of all these sites where I just went and read every piece of information that I could in there. And I started uh, looking at, the, at all the different content that they had and identifying, you know, this, the themes and stories that were common across these sites and the same authors that are present across these different sites. Um, and then I developed coding schemes for the media type, political views, mentions of particular stories and themes. Um, and just to give you a kind of sampling of the, the findings, one of the first things I found um, was that among the you know, most cited domains in this space, there's a lot of bot activity and actually two very different kinds of bots. Um, the real strategy I actually had to take out of the graph because it like overwhelms everything, um, but it was operated by, uh, it was mostly bot driven um, in a very interesting way. And then the Infowars site, um, we, we've talked a little bit about this a few years ago, no one knew what that site was. Now I think everyone, um, or a lot of people in the US at least understand what that is. Um, the Infowars site was also sort of bot driven in this case. Um, and so, so that was happening, um, but I don't think that's the, the whole thing going on here. So I kind of tried to extract that a little bit and focus on like not, not bot activity. Um, and so, so here's, here's, here's the graph. There's a few interesting things going on here. Um, the, the red sites are ones that were actually propagating alternative narratives or conspiracy theories about crisis events. The blue sites were actually denying those. Um, denying those alternative narratives. And the green sites were just media that people um, cited uh, as evidence. So they just cited a regular article and then they used you know, details within that article to support their alternative narrative or to deny an alternative narrative. Um, but for the most part, um, the green sites were used to like propagate these. And so you can see sites like Fox News and, and Sputnik and RT. The kinds of people that visit those sites are using those sites as part of their media ecosystem.